Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. Today we're going to review the Samsung Q80T QLED television. This is the 55 inch version, model number QE55Q80T, but it's also available in 49 inch, 65 inch, 75 inch, and a mammoth 85 inch sizes. Because this year Samsung is really making a push for their 8K QLEDs, the model numbers for the 4K range don't actually correspond to last year's. So the most straightforward way for me to sum up the Q80T is that it's a direct successor to 2019's Q70R. In other words, the Samsung Q80T will feature full array local dimming or FALD backlight technology, but not the anti-reflective filter or ultra-wide viewing angle found on the step-up Q90T or Q95T. I really like the design. The semi-glossy front screen is framed by an impressively thin gunmetal grey bezel. Although due to the underlying direct lit LED backlighting, the chassis has to put on some bulk. The central pedestal stand packs a bit of heft, providing stable support for the panel. The connections are found on the right rear of the display, including four HDMI ports, of which HDMI 3 supports EARC and HDMI 4 carries a game controller logo. According to Samsung, this socket can support 4K at 120Hz at 10-bit 444, making it effectively HDMI 2.1. Of course, there's currently no way for us to verify Samsung's claims due to the lack of HDMI 2.1 consumer sources on the market at the time we filmed this video in April 2020. But if true, then the Q80T should be future-proofed for the Microsoft Xbox Series X and Sony PS5 coming out later this year. Before I move on to talk about picture quality, I would like to thank Richard Sounds Manchester for sponsoring this video. If you are thinking about getting a new TV, please support this channel by considering buying from them. Call 0333 900 0086, mention HDTV test, and you will receive great price and service. Thanks again for your support. Right, the Samsung 55 Q80T uses a VA type LCD panel with RGB subpixel structure, which means deep blacks by LED LCD standards, but narrower viewing angles compared with IPS panels let alone OLED. Once peak white was aligned to 120 candelas per square meter, black level measured around 0.03 candelas per square meter on a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern, give and take 0.002 nits depending on the local dimming setting. Using our own custom altered pattern consisting a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background, we counted 5 vertical columns and 10 horizontal rows, giving us a total of 50 independently dimmable zones, which is exactly the same number of zones we counted on last year's 55-inch Q70R. There have been some suggestions that on 2020 models, Samsung has programmed the local dimming low setting to completely turn off local dimming, but that's certainly not the case on our QE55 Q80T review unit. You can see that local dimming was still active, only less aggressive than standard or high. Samsung's local dimming algorithm prioritizes minimizing blooming artifacts and keeping top and bottom letterbox bars inky black, which should appeal to the vast majority of consumers. But the downside is that small bright objects can look darker than reference with some vignetting effect. Due to the limited number of dimmable zones, occasionally the local dimming algorithm would get tripped up on challenging material causing visible luminance fluctuations, for example in this scene from Gravity, where Sandra Bullock is hurtling through space. While calibrating the television, we discovered a couple of pleasant improvements to the user experience. 1. The background of the user menu is now dark colored by default rather than the bright white on previous models, which means it's no longer blinding in HDR mode. More importantly, the presence of the control sliders at the bottom of the screen no longer affect the central patch you measure except in the darkest tones, drastically reducing the time required for manual calibration. When asked about this, Samsung said that they have developed an algorithm that can recognize actual content from user interface, which can also be applied to programs with subtitles to reduce blooming and backlight fluctuation. After calibration, Delta errors averaged 1.57 on this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured. 
with only a few colors exceeding the humanly perceptible threshold of Delta Era 3, translating to largely natural colors and skin tones in real-world content. There is improvement in motion handling too. For the first time in the history of Samsung QLED, Native 5.5 pulldown has been implemented on the Q80T, so you no longer need to engage any motion setting to see smooth pans in 24 frames per second movies without telecynic judder. Engaging picture clarity settings would increase motion resolution from the sample and hold baseline of 300 lines to 1080 lines or even higher. It just so happens that 1080 lines is the maximum measured in this particular horizontally scrolling test pattern. You can also achieve 1080 lines of motion resolution by enabling LED clear motion which activates black frame insertion or BFI. But in the UK and other PAL regions which broadcast at 50Hz, unfortunately this also forces jada reduction to max, leading to noticeable interpolation artifacts besides the conventional BFI shortcoming of visible flicker in brighter scenes. Otherwise, Samsung's motion processing introduced less, gl less, gl less glitches than observed in previous years, although still exhibited the intermittent stutter in 50Hz broadcast with mixed edits even with picture clarity settings turned off. The only surefire way to eradicate the stutter was by engaging game mode, which unfortunately cannot be deployed on the internal TV tuner. Upscaling of standard definition content was very good. I've always rated the upconversion quality on Samsung televisions, and the same applies to the Q80T. It managed to retrieve nice detail while being quite forgiving at the same time, as long as all superfluous edge enhancement was turned off. Screen uniformity on our review sample was above average for an LED LCD TV. There's mild dirty screen effect or DSE on full field gray slides, and some darkening along the sides which totally didn't bother us in real-world viewing. For HDR, peak brightness measured 860 nits on a 10% window and 500 nits full fill. Both figures are brighter than last year's Q70R, helping the Q80T deliver even more impactful HDR. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage remained the same at 93% UV while Rec2020 was 73%. But judging from the spectral power distribution captured using our Jetty 1511 spectral radiometer, there may have been some change in the makeup of the quantum dot enhancement film. General gradation in HDR content was the smoothest we've seen yet on a Samsung television, even though the company has done away with the decontouring filter embedded within the digital clean view setting found on 2019 sets. However, the posterization surrounding very bright specular highlights we had spotted on last year's Samsung QLEDs remained present on the Q80T. Like all Samsung HDR TVs, during playback of HDR10 content, the QE55 Q80T adapts its PQEOTF tone curve according to the mastering display luminous metadata rather than max CLL, so once properly set up, the television will preserve all bright specular highlight details sometimes at the expense of overall APL or average picture level. Note that I specifically said properly set up, because the default factory settings still over-brighten the PQEOTF even in the most accurate movie picture preset, but at least this can be calibrated to track closer to the ST2084 standard. The good news is that Samsung has provided a way for dynamic tone mapping to be disabled this year for more accurate reproduction of creative intent. If you look at this paused frame from pan, the default local dimming setting of standard would apply some dynamic tone mapping, but switching to high would disable dynamic tone mapping, thus retaining more detail of the sun and surrounding clouds, with the APL looking closer to reference. Even if you choose to engage dynamic tone mapping, this year's algorithm is not as in your face as a pimped up Ford Mustang GT compared with last year's undefeatable implementation. In terms of dynamic metadata format, Samsung continues to support only HDR10+, but not Dolby Vision on 2020 models such as the Q80T. For gaming, input lag measured between 12 and 13 milliseconds in both 1080p and 4K HDR game modes after we install firmware 1091, the latest at the time we filmed this video in April 2020. Engaging Game Motion Plus would more than double input lag to 28 milliseconds. 
We tested both ALLM and FreeSync VRR to be working from the Xbox One X together with the Q80T, although since most console games are 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, we are not entirely sure how much benefit is to be gained. To sum up, the QE55 Q80T is a high quality LED LCD from Samsung that begins to aim for accuracy rather than the outright brightness we have seen over the past couple of years which bodes well for the South Korean brand's higher up 2020 models. Sometimes, it's all too easy for us to form a preconception based on specifications, especially the number of local dimming zones. Oh, it's a downgrade from the Q80R. Oh, Samsung has downgraded its entire 4K range. But the fact is that the Q80T is designed as a replacement for last year's Q70R. They even have similar price points. The launch price of this 55-inch Q80T is £1,600, while the launch price of the 55-inch Q70R was actually a bit higher at £1,700. And it's not even a like-for-like -like replacement. The Q80T actually does quite a few things better than the Q70R. Peak brightness is higher, approaching 900 nits. There is working ERRC support. It's easier to calibrate. The FALD backlight is less likely to freak out with subtitles. It has native 55 pulldown without needing to engage motion settings. Dynamic tone mapping can be switched off. Tonal gradation is generally smoother. Input lag is slightly lower. And there's 4K 120Hz support at 10 bit 444 on one HDMI port, making it more likely to be sufficiently future proofed for the Xbox Series X or PS5. And bizarrely, Thanks to the absence of the ultra-wide viewing angle and superior anti-glare filter implemented on step-up models, the Q80T should actually boast the highest native contrast among Samsung's FALD QLED TVs this year. The continuing lack of Dolby Vision support will put off some buyers, but if you genuinely want to buy a Samsung TV, you'll probably look past that anyway. Because it offers multiple areas of improvement over last year's Q70R yet starts off at a lower price, the Samsung Q80T deservedly earns our highly recommended award. If you have found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.